Hello everyone, and welcome to, I guess we'll call this episode two of our level one advanced beginner ballet classes. On behalf of Canada's National Ballet School, I want to give a big, big welcome to our adult ballet program, as well as anybody who might be joining us for the first time uh, in this particular episode. If you haven't seen us before, I strongly encourage you to go back to our first ballet class, our advanced beginner level one class, and have a look at that one. I think it was very nice, but you can be the judge of that. Uh, so today we're continuing on in the same vein that we have before, sort of trying to improvise our way to make sure that we keep the joy of dance going in our lives with the space that we've got. So from my living room to yours, a big, big welcome. The music that we're using today as always, is by the wonderful Rob Thaller, who, as I've said before, I have the great privilege of working with every single day in our professional ballet program, uh, and I'm so excited to use his music. He's just an absolutely wonderful musician, so you can check him out on Apple Music and Spotify. And before we get started, my goodness, I'm forgetting my manners. My name is Ian Parsons, and I am an artistic staff member at Canada's National Ballet School, and a double graduate, as a matter of fact, of both the professional ballet program and the teacher training program for former professional dancers. So now, before we finally get a move on, just a couple of quick safety-related points beforehand. As kind of goes without saying, make sure you have enough space to extend your arms, legs, anything else around you and not, you know, knock anyone's teeth out or anything like that and break anything priceless. And also really make sure that the floor that you're dancing on is safe and not too slippery. If you're dancing on something like tile, I would recommend that you put down a yoga mat or something just to give yourself a little bit of extra traction. Let's say if you're dancing in socks. If you're wearing your ballet shoes, let's say you normally come to our ballet classes uh, on campus at Jarvis Street, just be aware that the surface is not too slippery. Sometimes it depends your shoes, they can get a little bit slippery. However, if they're sort of the rubber soles like I've got, it's usually pretty okay. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get dancing. Now, to get us started today, we're going to do a little warm-up exercise, which, to be nice and easy on our brains, is going to be exactly the same as we did last week, just to make sure that we really have an opportunity to get it right. So we start on all fours, like so. Here we go, cat and cow. Arch. Again. Really move that spine as much as you can. It's torture time. Oh, that's what I should have written on my sign up there. You're giving me ideas. Six, seven, eight, four more counts. How am I doing? Coming down, turning out in first position. Tendu back, right leg. Remember that constant barber pole rotation of that leg that we talked about last week. Curving back. Now 
we go for the double time? Only once. Rising up. Now make sure your second toe joint is the center of your axis for this balance. Now, to start our bar for real, we have our plie exercise. So we begin in first position, arm in preparatory, and we go five, six, just a breath of the arm, eight. Now we have the very technical term, hemi, semi, demi. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Hemi plie, this is not a real thing. Very small, one and two, and a little bit more, and four. Now your full demi-plie, five, and six, rise, seven. Now leave your arm in first, grand plie, arm in first, grand plie, and two, and up three, and four, tendu à la seconde, five, six, lower, seven, same thing in second. So this one is a very small one. Up and even more. And up all the way. Full demi plie. Up, rise, seven. Hold, eight. And grand plie. Without your pants in the way. Two and up, three and four. Bas montant du side, five. Six, close, fifth front, and eight. You do the same thing in fifth position. So small, up, bigger, up, full demi-plie, rise, eight. Now, no grand plie. We're just going to plie, open the arm, one, hallelujah, and three, a uh, four, and tendu, six, and back to fifth again. Fifth front, eight. Arm to first, port bras. One, and two, forward. Three, and four, find that flat back position. Five, and six, try saying that three times fast. Seven, and eight, head. One, and two, come right back, upper spine. Three, and four, and five. Six, seven, and eight. To finish. Plies on the first side. Small plie. Even bigger. Your full demi now. Rise. Keep the arm in first, grand plie. Tendu. Breathe. Fit your pants if you need to. Woo! There we go. Full demi. side, closing fifth front. Same thing again. Full demi. Rise. Now, hallelujah. Side again. Return where you came from. Now arm to first. Hinging from your hips, flat spine. Coming up. Change your head. 
So before we embark on the second side, just your one little teaching point for this exercise. Now, it's very unusual to do three different kinds of demi-plie because we always just think, well, there's one. But actually, you use all the time various degrees of demi-plie depending on what you're doing and depending on how much time you have. So it's really important to sort of explore those three different layers. But also, every time you come up, because you come up three times within that first little bit of the exercise, you really want to think again about active barber pole legs on the way up. The way down is the easy part. It's on the way up that we really want to think about how flat can I make my thighs at the front there. Explore those three different levels. All the way full demi plie. Take your eyes. Now, this arm is dragging you forward, but can you keep your back upright? That's the challenge of that arm. Aren't I wicked? giving you extra challenges. Demi again. Bigger. Full Demi. Tendu to close fifth front. Save it for the last demi. Now open up your chest. Hallelujah. Tony side again. Fifth front. to Batman Tondu, we're sort of continuing on the same theme that we were working on last week of acknowledging all the joints in your foot so you have a really articulate foot just as much as your hands. So we go five, six, and seven, eight. Tondu front. One. Now the rest of the leg stays stretched. Just relax your toes. Demi point. Two and three. Four. Slow Tondu. Five. Six, closing fifth, seven, eight. Now you slide from first, one, two, back to fifth, three, four, one more tendu, five, six, and seven, eight. Same thing to the side, one, demi point, two, and three, four, slow tendu, five, six, close fifth front, seven, Eight. Slide. One, two. Slice it back. Three, four. One more tendu. Six. Little tendu sandwich there. And eight. To the back. One. Demi point. And three. I'll go a little bit faster. Five, six. Close fifth. Eight. Slide. One, two, and three, four. Another tendu. Six. Closing first. 
Now we plie. One, two, demi point. Three, four, really work that metatarsal. Up, six, seven, eight. Find your balance if you're feeling brave. Three, four, open, five. Woo! Not like that. And seven, eight. Ba boing. Tendu devant. Slow. Fifth. Slide. Back to fifth. One more tendu. Same thing side. Dip. Closing fifth. Slide. Back to fifth. One more time to the back. side of this, I just want to make a quick point about this actually quite difficult sliding to fifth or back to first. It's a real workout for your inner thighs to really get that back. But you want to think again, I talk about this barber pole a lot. It's not so much as important, well, turnout is always important, but it's not so much as important in terms of the leg that's actually doing the tendu. When you're doing these slides, I actually want you to think about the leg closest to the bar. Because the more you barber pull that leg around, the flatter this edge becomes, and then it makes it much more comfortable for you to slice into that fifth position. So I actually kind of like to think about closing fifth position as one of those, uh, those lunch meat slicers. You know when you go to the deli section of the grocery store and they have those giant silver machines that do those very, 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 very thin slices of ham or something like that? That's what I want you to think about every time you close fifth. Like you're making a very thin, beautiful slice of prosciutto, not this sort of thick lunch mate kind of cheap ham one. Very, very thin. Tendu devant. Now, nice, beautiful prosciutto. This exercise is facing the bar. I just want to remind you about what I said last week 
about any kind of arabesque line where you're lifting your leg off the ground, if you take that imaginary sphere inside your chest and slightly move it forward and then ever so slightly roll it upwards so that we're not tipping down towards the floor, you'll feel that lift in your chest to give you the freedom to move your leg up to the back. So with that in mind, we start our jeté. So facing the bar, in fifth position with your right foot front, we start one, a two, a three, a four, five, six. Lift a two, three, coup de pied, four, and a out, two, three, close four, one, jeté. Same thing, hopefully I won't get my numbers mixed up. Close four, five, six, to the back. Two, three, heel forward, coup de pied derriere. And out, two, three, close four, five, six. Now, we tend you back. One, two, three, just a little tiny lift of your heel. Four, five, six, one more. One, two, three, close four, five, six. And then you're ready to go on the left. So starting demi point, I'll face you so you can get a little bit of a better look. So up, two, three, and point. Five, six, one, two, three, close four, five, six, one, two, three, uh, ah, yeah, da, da, yeah, da, da, yeah, closing back to the back. Could it be derriere? Two, three, oh, sorry, demi, point, two, then point, and uh, out, close four, five, six, and we go one, two, three, little lift, five, six, another one, two, three, close four, and wait. Demi point. Front. Four. Out. In. Demi. Coup de pied. So lucky, lucky you, you don't have to repeat that exercise because we did right and left. But I'm still going to give you my little helpful hint for this one, and then you're very welcome to rewind a little bit and give it another go. But something that I really want you to pay attention to, you'll notice that when we did the exercise I used the expression a little test. And what I mean is, I'll face you a little bit more, when you take that tendu back and you slightly lift that heel, what we're trying to test is we're trying to test that you're far enough forward onto that leg so that you could lift up into demi point at any moment. Because if you're hanging out back here, this is not a very good look. Yes, yeah, so you want to try and keep your pelvis underneath you as much as possible. So that's why we do that little test. Now, moving along to rond de jambe. We start in first position and we go five, six, seven, eight. Now turn both legs in. Turn in, two, turn them out. Three, four, rond de jambe. Front and side and back. A close. Twice more. And sigh. And back. Constantly feeling that barber pole leg. Five, six, and seven. Guess what? You repeat on the dog. Turn in. Two. Turn out. Four. A back side. Front. A back side. Front. A back side. Front. Close. Now we do a scenic tour of all of our port de bras. Going forward. One two and three, 
four. You can do this in first or fifth if you like. I'll do it in first. Eight and toward the bar. Two, three, four. Coming up, five, six, seven. Now we'll take the plunge. Combo back with the arm up. One, two, combo back. Three, four, recover. Five, six, seven, eight. Lift coup de pied devant. One, two, just a little test of your balance. Place it on a plie. Five, six, and finish. And eight. <laughs> Turning in both legs. Ask yourself, when was the last time you took a breath? I just had to remind myself. Turning out. Back on the dog. to the second side, I want to just talk to you briefly about this turn in and then turn out. You don't have to go on a high demi point, just enough to move on the ball of your foot. But the important thing is that you really make sure that that rotation comes from here. So if you can visualize what your femur looks like in its hip socket, I almost want you to imagine that you're trying to breathe a cushion of air inside your hips when you do that. So we feel that length here really nice and tall through our hips so that we can go right from the top as opposed to just cranking it from our heel and then our foot is not aligned with our knee and then our kneecap falls off and hits the conductor in the face. No, I'm just kidding, but you know what I mean. It's the safe way to go about rotating your legs. Right from the top, hold on to your kneecaps. It also helps if you remember that the tondu comes next. Third time. Turning it again. to Batman Fondue. 
We have one requisite torture exercise every week. I like to think that this is it. So just grin and bear it. You can curse me as much as you want in the privacy of your own home. But let's give this one a try. Here we go. Batman fondue, starting in fifth. Five, six, and seven. That should have been just a breath. Eight. Lift. Coup de pied. Two. Little test. The same thing that we did in the exercises before. Three, four, plie. Five. Fondue to the floor. Seven and eight. Repeat. One, two. Little lift. Three, four, plie. Five to the floor, both knees stretching at the same time, eight. Guess what? Same thing side. Two, plie, three. That's not a plie, that's a little test. Five, now a plie. Six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, little test, but this time you close fifth on demi point. Five, face the bar in first. Six, the same leg that you were just using comes to the back. Seven, eight. You repeat. One, two, little lift. Three, four, and five, six, seven, close. Eight, one more time. One, two, little lift. I told you that leg was gonna get a workout. Six, seven, now on the last count, you put that foot down into a lunge. Eight, first arabesque, one, Two, feel that reach. Three, four, remember, diamonds, ice cream, or money from last week. Seven, eight, what are you reaching for? One, two, hold. Three, four, a little lift, and you can let that arm grow a little bit to finish. And. been such an exercise that makes you so happy to do it on the other side. So before we do this fondue on the other side, again, I really want you to think about that little test moment to really make sure that even when you're standing with your heel on the floor, you have, you know, probably 60 to 70 percent of your weight, possibly even more, on the ball of your foot, and your heel is just there for support. Yeah, you don't want to be 50-50 because then you have to do what I like to call this giant gear shift over in order to be able to get up onto demi point. So just really staying on the ball of that foot. I know you want to fast forward, but it's okay, I'm here with you.
remember this one's the different one. Rise, face the bar, same foot to the back. today, I think. Reach for it! And grow it up tall from the center. So, we continue on to Batmo Frappe. Now for this one, unlike last week, I would like us to do it just with a totally pointed foot the whole time as opposed to doing it with that flex foot so that we can really concentrate on keeping that thigh still and giving the back of that leg a really good workout in this frappe exercise. So we go five, six, seven, eight. We start by going out, out, a two, and out, a four, and five, a six, a seven, eight. Now accent in, in, a two, a in, a two, and in, a six, a seven, and a eight. Two frappes to the front. One, a two, and three, a four, to the side, a six, and seven. Close eight, little lift, inside leg, and test. Four, a five, six, seven, eight. And then you reverse the whole thing. So we start with accent out. Out, a two, and out. A four, out, a six, seven, accent in, in, a two, a in, a in, I closed the wrong way first, eight, grab it back, back, a two, and three, a four, to the side, six, and seven, eight, inside leg, two, little test, four, five, six, seven, finish. Accent in. Two front face front. Knee back to the side. Inside leg. Little chest. Balance. Close. Pick it up. Out. Accent in. So before we do the left side of this exercise, you'll notice that I skipped right along ahead to incorporate frappe back. Now, if you're comfortable with doing frappe back, absolutely reverse the exercise. However, if that's not quite in your repertoire yet, I think it would be very well worth it to repeat the whole exercise, just front and side again, to really get that solid before you progress to the back. Or you can do a little quick turn to the bar and also do the frappe back to there. It's totally up to you with what you feel your comfort level is. Now, before we do the second side, I want you to really think about making sure again that that thigh is staying totally still. You put that thigh in a space hold and it's only your knee that's moving. Remember we talked about last week that sort of loose knee feeling. Wouldn't that be fun if your knee could do that? Anyway, you want to keep that nice, loose feeling for those frappes. Accent in. Frappe. In 
inside leg. Little test. Try your balance. Accent in. Frappe back. Or facing the bar. Or front again. I don't think this one is quite as torturous as last week. We go five, six, and seven. A little releve law only. One, lift, two, and three, four. Close your eyes. Five, you can test your balance if you like. Woo, not like that. And seven, and eight. Same thing, side. One, lift, two, you can test now if you like, three, and four, take the bar to close your eyes, five, and six, and seven, and face the bar. Guess what? One, and two, and take your arms off, and four, close your eyes, five, six, sweep, Seven, and hands on your sternum, tendu back to lunge. One, and two, and to the ceiling, high release. Four, and five, recover with your arms to third, and a dramatic, whew, seven, oh, to finish. Have I got it? Woo! So the hard thing in this exercise, well actually, the hard thing, almost about everything in this particular class, is that transferring from two legs to one leg and then standing on that one leg. So what I want you to think about on the second side is at this moment I'm in fifth position, I'm standing cleanly with my axis in the center. So if you could, could picture the axis going right down through the center of my head, through the center of my nose, and right down into the floor. When I transfer, let's say I'm taking my right foot front, I'm going to do that relevé long. Before I lift my leg, I have to change that axis from moving from the center of my face here. I almost like to think of it as moving over, so it's through the center of your eye. So it'll go down through here, through my eye, and then through the ball of my foot. So it's here, and then I go relevé long, but before that, shift so that I'm cleanly able to go up from that point. Also, try and doing the closing your eyes without holding onto the bar. Aha! To the bar.
our final exercise of the bar, moving along into grand battement. So for this exercise, this shape of your bar is actually not ideal for what I would like to do because I want to do this with our backs to the bar. So for me, I'm actually going to put my arms slightly behind just here, but if you were at a completely flat surface, let's say I was doing it on my console table and it was a little bit higher, you would have your arms sort of out this way, but without pinching your shoulder blades together. So you want to have as open a collarbone as possible. But I'm going to do it like this. You'll definitely know if you're heaving to the back when you could take your robot off front. So we go five, six, seven, eight. Grab up off front. One and two. Hold three, four. Again, five, six, seven. Three times in total. One, two, three, and four. Same leg. Five, plie to a fondue. Close. Seven, you might have to adjust. Eight, other leg. One, a two. Your leg will go higher, obviously. Five, six, seven, eight, three times, two, three, four, five, six. Then you'll just do a little scooch so your right leg is going to the side. Seven, eight. Same thing. One closing front, three, four, one closing back, seven brushing down into the floor. Brush, two, three, four, a little broken down sutanu, so you rise five. Facing the bar in first, other side in fifth, eight, guess what, same thing, side, closing front, side, closing back, side, closing front, and then you can just do this sutanu to finish. Remember, really dig that trench with that foot. Three times. Side, plie. Fifth, a little scooch if you need it. Are your sitting bones facing the floor as you take that grown up off front? Ooh, mine could be better. Fondue, scooch to the side. Side closing front, right leg. exercise that goes right and left in the same exercise, so you don't have to do it again. Well, I think you probably should, keeping the following thing in mind. I made a point about your sitting bones facing the floor when I was doing grab en front, because I felt that myself, I was tucking under a little bit. So this is actually a really fundamental thing that I want to talk about in ballet in general. So if you find your sitting bones, roughly where they are, underneath here, if you imagine that both your sitting bones had a laser pointer on them, and then they would be facing the floor with that laser pointing down to the floor at all times. So when you go to the front, you try and keep both those sitting bones facing the floor without letting them follow the same way as your leg. That way your legs can woo, go totally independently of the rest of your body. But that upright pelvis, those laser pointers facing the floor, that will be something that I'll talk about quite a bit. So it's a really good thing to try and get into our bodies now. Now finally, we have a little baton tendu in the center. So starting in fifth or first, whatever is comfortable for you, facing the downstage left corner. We go five, six, seven, Eight. One, two, hold three, little test. Five, six, arm seven, eight. Again, one, 
two, hold three, little test. Five, six, seven, or fast. One to the side, two, three, little test. Five, six, arm seven, eight. Same thing again. One, two, three, little test. Close back this time. Turn, arm to the back. One, two, hold three, little test. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, hold three, little test. Five, six, turn on fast again. Seven, eight in second. Now we go for a grand plie. One, feel the rotation. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now demi plie. Two, three, four, up, five, six, take a balance, and eight. And then at the end, we can just test after the music, a little bit of a twist to the right, and come back to center, and a little bit of a twist to the left, and come back to center, ooh, to finish. Make sure you stay forward on that leg. After all, that's what we've been working on. Use that moment to breathe out. Music is going to continue, but I'll leave it on for you, and then try to the other side. This music is lovely, just try and ignore it. Breathe, and coming down. Before we do our final repetition and give it a go on the other side, my last little pearl of wisdom for the day. So, as you can tell, I love to bash you over the head with a concept. So <laughs> we can really think again about that lift underneath. Or if you want to think about it another way, imagine you're wearing a kilt. Woo! And you feel a little bit of a breeze on that lift. Yeah, so again, we're still feeling that forward momentum, making sure that we're staying on the ball of that foot at all times. So we're very comfortable to stand on one leg. That's me hitting you over the head with it for this week. Tendu du front. Remember 
no kickstands to the back. everyone that's it for episode two of our level one advanced beginner class with me Ian Parsons I'm so happy to be able to share these few moments of happiness with you uh, in our own little private dance studios so if you don't know we actually have an entire series of these classes online I do sort of a level one advanced beginner classes on Tuesdays and then the intermediate class happens on Thursdays last week we had the absolutely fantastic Philip Payne and this coming Thursday we have the wonderfully superb Kate Garrett so if intermediate is also a bit up your street I strongly encourage you to check out those classes now uh, we are so overwhelmed by the positive feedback that we've received so far on these classes. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to us. We are continuing to put out all sorts of resources, so please keep checking on the online class adult ballet portal on the website of Canada's National Ballet School because we have a lot of great resources that we're going to continue churning out for you as long as the circumstances dictate. And finally, uh, for those of you who don't know, Canada's National Ballet School is a charitable organization which brings, tries to bring the power of movement to people no matter what their ability, background, etc. We have such a fantastic array of programming and it's support from people all over our community that help us to bring the joy of dance to everybody. So if it's within your means, I strongly urge you to consider making a contribution to Canada's National Ballet School so that we can continue bringing all this wonderful material to you. So if you need more information about that, you can go to www.nbs-enb.ca and you can learn all about all our fantastic programs. So that's it for me for today. Uh, thank you so, so much for joining us again. And I'll hope to see you next time, episode three. I'll catch you there. Have a great day.